Hey guys, today we're going to be making some cauliflower mash. So we're going to be making keto mashed potatoes basically. Uh, we're going to be using cauliflower to make it. And um, this is a great recipe for a side if you are craving like if you're having a mashed potato type of craving and you guys it is pretty good let's get into the video but before we do please make sure that you do hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so that you could be updated every time we drop a video um, especially if you enjoy these keto recipes all right so we're gonna use one head of cauliflower and I just happen to have this head of cauliflower but you can do this with any cauliflower that you want you can do it with you know frozen cauliflower you can even do it with riced cauliflower that's frozen you know uh, I just happen to have this on hand so that is what we're gonna be using today and I'm just gonna take it over to the sink rinse it out real quick and then we're going to remove these parts here and get it ready so that we can just cut up our cauliflower into smaller pieces all right and you know what it really doesn't matter how you cut your cauliflower up I'm um, just cutting up in little pieces and adding them to this bowl I mean really you're going to chop it up anyways so it really doesn't matter it doesn't have to be cut any kind of way it doesn't have to be cut any certain size you know the smaller you make them the easier it's going to be to mash them up so let's go ahead and continue to get these all cut up and added to this bowl all right guys so now we have our cauliflower all cut up the only thing you need to do now is i'm going to add in some water to this bowl and i'm going to pop it in the microwave to steam it you can always also steam it on the stove top whatever your preference is but you know just to make it a little quicker I'm just going to go ahead and steam it in the microwave, um, you know, just microwave it until it's tender. It's going to depend on your microwave stove top. It's usually about 10 to 15 minutes or so. All right. And while our cauliflower is getting tender in the microwave, we are going to start doing our garlic for our cauliflower mash. And you're going to add in about one tablespoon of olive oil to a pan. And we're also going to add in two tablespoons of butter. And the reason that we are mixing them is so a lot of times when you melt butter, you know, after a few minutes, it starts to burn and the olive oil helps it from burning. So if you mix those two together, then the, that should pre the olive oil helps prevent the butter from burning. All right, and then that butter is melted, and apparently I did not get ahead of the game. I actually meant to chop up the garlic before I did this, and it looks like I forgot. So the only thing we need to do now is take these cloves of garlic. You only need about three cloves of garlic, but I really love garlic a lot, so I'm putting it in four, and um, it's your preference. So with three cloves of garlic you should be okay if you really don't like garlic that much at all then maybe stick with two cloves but for me it's gonna be four so we're just gonna chop up the garlic into little pieces like minced garlic you can also use minced garlic from a jar and then you're gonna add it to your pan with the butter and the oil and we're just gonna let it cook until it's fragrant so let's let that happen and we will come back for the next step all right and we went ahead and took our cauliflower out of the microwave and we drained it try to get as much water out as possible and now i'm just dumping it on a towel a clean towel and i'm gonna kind of just try to pat the cauliflower dry as much as possible and then we can add it back into the bowl the reason you do this is um you don't want to put your cauliflower in the bowl you know just drenched from you know soaking in the water from getting tender you're gonna end up with some runny mashed cauliflower and nobody really wants that all right so then after you have dried that up go ahead and add that back into your bowl and then we can go ahead and add in the garlic with the butter and oil make sure that you do scrape up all the butter and oil that you have in the pan also and add that in you don't want to leave that out and it's going to help give it a really good flavor and the oil you know is like a garlic oil now so make sure that you do add that in mix it in really well so it can get all over that cauliflower 
Now we're going to add in our seasonings. In here I have garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and pink salt. And we are going to add that in and then give it a mix again just to make sure it is all well combined. All right, and now we have some shredded Parmesan. You can use grated Parmesan too if you want, but I happen to have the shredded Parmesan also. So uh, either one will work. And right here I had about a fourth of a cup and we're just gonna add that in just to help out a little bit with flavor. And then here I have two ounces of cream cheese and I do have that cream cheese softened a little bit. You can either do at room temperature or just soften in the microwave, you know, about 10, min 10 seconds at a time until it gets soft. And then I'm also adding in two tablespoons of dried chives. You can add in whatever herbs you want. You can add in um, rosemary or parsley or whatever you want. But I like this with the chives. So once you have that all mixed in, I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this. You can either uh, use a potato masher or a bean masher like this one and just get it all mashed up. However, if you do it this way, it's not going to be a smooth consistency. It is going to be a little chunky, so um, it I guess it just depends on your preference of how you want it. But I figure I'll show you both ways. If you, in case you don't have a food processor or anything, uh, you can still make this recipe. You would just need to mash it up really well like this. For me though, I did just recently get a food processor, so I'm definitely going to use that. Um, and I think you can use a blender too. You just have to be very careful with a blender because you want to keep an eye on it so that way it doesn't uh, blend too much. And a food processor kind of chops it up um, and then it's going to be like a more smooth consistency for your cauliflower mash. So if you don't have a food processor, um, definitely get one. You can get them for pretty cheap. I actually got this one at um target for on sale for 15 dollars and this is just a really small one so i probably will have to do it in two different batches um but i'll leave a link in the description down below too um for some other ones that you can get uh but if you don't have one or have no intention on getting one because you don't use it often then just use a bean masher and that's fine all right, and so we'll just go ahead and start adding in this cauliflower mash. Now, you don't have to mash it before you put it in the food processor, just so you know. Once you have, um, you know, added everything to the cauliflower, you can add it straight into the food processor. The only reason I mashed it up first is just to show you that if you don't have a food processor, you can still make cauliflower mash. You just have to work a little bit harder for it. but. So we're adding this to the food processor and now um, we're just going to chop it up a little bit until it gets into the consistency that you want, which I like it not runny and I like it to be thick and creamy and uh, smooth, kind of like, you know, mashed potatoes. So however you want it, then just go ahead and keep an eye on it. All right, so it looks like it's pretty much how I want it. And so I don't know if you can tell uh, by looking at it here, but as you can see, it is pretty thick and creamy like mashed potatoes should look. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to just add them to a bowl. All right, so now we're just gonna scoop up our cauliflower mash into this bowl and we're pretty much done. This is a super simple recipe. This is a great side, you know, when you want to replace mashed potatoes. And it's really easy to make. It's fast. Here we go. So as you can see, sometimes when you buy the store-bought, the, you know, the kind that you just heat up in the microwave, it's really runny. This one is not runny at all. It's fluffy, just like mashed potatoes. So, mmm. This is good. This is good. It has that really strong garlic flavor. If you don't like garlic that much, um, don't put as much garlic as I did. Um, 
I call for about three to four cloves of garlic for the recipe. Um, and I also added in garlic powder. So if you don't like that much garlic, maybe do like two cloves of garlic and skip out on the garlic powder. But I love the way that this came out. It's definitely a good keto side uh, when you're craving mashed potatoes. So I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next video.